I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood? I have a dream. America takes pride in its federalism. It also takes pride in being the land of the free and the home of the brave. They make the very foundation of the United States, a foundation that its own president may have now put at risk. Donald Trump's response to the killing of a black man, George Floyd, has not gone down too well with Americans. The president first called the protesters terrorists, and then he sent federal troops to battle them. The result is this. This is the United States, four months before the presidential election. Protests have taken center stage. Many are comparing the situation to a civil war. This weekend was a particularly violent one. Protests flared up across the US, from Portland to Austin. Thousands of people came out on the streets protesting racial injustice, police brutality, and over-policing. In Portland, federal troops deployed tear gas and flash bangs to disperse the demonstrators. At least a dozen protesters were arrested in Seattle. Police claimed that the demonstrators had attacked them with rocks, fireworks and bottles. Protests also spread to Kentucky. At least 80 people were, were arrested for assault and disorderly conduct. Similar scenes played out in Austin, Aurora and Oakland. Who are these protesters? They're men and women of various races, ethnicities and age groups. There are veterans. Then there is the wall of moms that is protecting the protesters from the federal troops. So here's a question. George Floyd was killed two months ago. The protests did simmer down in the last few weeks. What triggered this sudden flare up? What triggered it? The answer could be Trump. Trump has always tried to project himself as the law and order president. He saw an opportunity when BLM, Black Lives Matter protesters, refused to leave the streets of Portland and other cities. Trump said the city mayors had failed to rein in the protest, so he sent federal troops to fight these protesters. Donald Trump deployed officers from the Customs and Border Protection Agency they are supposed to safeguard America's borders and fight terrorists. But here they were, fighting Americans at home. The federal troops clashed with the protesters. Unidentified officers began arresting people and bundling them into unmarked cars. While all of this is maybe okay in authoritarian regimes, democratic America would have none of it. Donald Trump's response to the protests ended up sparking a fresh chain of protests. How did he respond again? He reacted to this by sending troops to more cities. Why? Because he thought that the situation was worse than Afghanistan. We have more federal law enforcement than I can tell you. In Portland, they've done a fantastic job. They've been there three days, and they really have done a fantastic job in a very short period of time. No problem. They grab them, a lot of people in jail. They're leaders. These are anarchists. These are not protesters. People say protesters. These people are anarchists. Well, several U.S. presidents have tried to secure their re-election by sending troops to other countries. But Donald Trump has waged a war against his own voters. He has triggered a standoff between Americans and the federal troops. He has also put federalism and democracy at stake. And none of this, we can tell you, is earning him brownie points. November 3rd elections are just four months away, and both 
The scenes on the streets and the opinion polls are pointing against President Trump.